And the larger problem is not just why do we have too few women at the top, but also why do we have too many women at the bottom? And you have to see the both together because the bulge is enormous at the bottom, right? Two thirds of shift workers are women. A majority of minimum wage win workers are women. The poorest people in our society are women who are simultaneously breadwinners and caregivers. And if you look at it that way, then the problem is not women and why we're not getting enough women at the top. The problem is why are we not supporting caregiving? Why are we, on the one hand, telling women at the top that if they take out for time out for care, a hugely important activity for the point of view of the society, uh, they get knocked off leadership track? And why are we f asking women at the bottom to simultaneously hold down two full-time jobs without providing daycare, family leave, paid maternity and paternity leave, all the kinds of supports that, frankly, other countries uh, provide for care? It seems like this book really opens up a conversation about work in America, which is uh, we, we're, we, we're overworked. We work yes. too much. And, yes. and there are too many expectations and demands placed on Americans, um, unlike you know, people in other countries. And I wonder, I mean, so on the one hand, we can, you know, we can have this discussion. We can begin to talk about what that means. But how do you really start to change that, the culture of work in America? I mean, how do you really start to address it? So I, I think we, we actually do start by talking about it. And I do think some of this, again, you know, the workplace or the way we think about the workplace, some of it is unquestionably competition and global competition. I mean, you know, margins have gotten thinner. People have wor been working longer. There are lots of reasons for that. But the, the evidence that this is bad for productivity, bad for our health, and bad for creativity, and this is Bridget is right there. She wrote Overwhelmed. I, doc, I quote her uh, extensively on all the evidence on how bad it is for us to be working this hard for our work. We have that evidence. We just haven't been willing to claim it. The infrastructure of care, the way I put it, is doesn't exist, and we cannot actually, as I said, invest in the next generation. We are not going to be able to take care of my generation, the, what Ai Jen Poo calls the elder boom. I mean, what are we going to do with the largest generation ever before the millennials as we age? Somebody's going to have to care for them. Uh, and we're going to have to provide the, the means and the, the work flexibility to allow people to care for each other.